everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I want to talk a little bit about booking and planning advanced dining reservations or ADRs for your Disney vacation and this is something that a lot of people have to give a lot of thought to especially if you have the dining plan. Um, with Disney you do need to book your reservations quite far in advance. It didn't used to be so much the case other than for certain restaurants but now I find that most restaurants um, seem to get quite booked up. If you don't book your reservations ahead of time other people will have and then you might struggle to get into the places that you want to. So we're just going to be looking at a couple of different elements. First of all how I decide which restaurants to book. If you're completely new to the whole experience it's just mind-boggling. There are so many different places to eat and you might just be thinking how do I even know where to start or which ones to go for. So we're going to talk about that and then also just looking at how you book them. So the first place I go to is allears.net and this website is so good for for showing you information about dining and it has all of the menus for the Disney restaurants. So if we go down here to dining and on the left here to menu index, um, this website has basically every restaurant, every kiosk, um, quick service and table service and you can see everything that they do. So as you can see as I'm scrolling down you're probably thinking oh my goodness there are so many and yes there are. So you have all the resorts, you have the parks and then you have Disney Springs. There are so many different places to choose from. Obviously just going through all of these would be kind of crazy. Um, I do have some videos which talk about snack credits, about dining, about dining plan, my favourite places to eat. If you watch my vlogs, you can actually see us going to a lot of these places. So that would be one place to start, would be to watch back over the vlogs that I have to see us actually dining in some of these restaurants, because that could give you some ideas of places that you like to eat. I will just click on a couple of these to show you the information it gives you. So we're just going to click on Yak and Yeti, just a random choice here. So it will tell you the name of the restaurant, where the restaurant is located, in this case it's Disney's Animal Kingdom, and whether you're looking at lunch or dinner menu or breakfast or whatever it might be. Another thing to pay attention to is this section. So this is telling you if you're paying for um, your meals, you're not on the dining plan, it tells you if there are any discounts. So in this case they take Annual Pass Holder and Disney Vacation Club. Some places take the Tables in Wonderland discount card, so this should tell you which discounts are available. And then also it tells you here if it's on the Disney dining plan, whether it's table service or quick service. So that's important to know um, for your planning, obviously whether it's table or quick service. And as you go down, this tells you all of the menu items with pricing. So it's really useful. I use this website all the time for my planning. It's my go-to to look at menus. They have everything on here. So I'll just pick one, um, this one. So this is telling you the Disney dining plan is accepted and only as a snack credit. So this is a kiosk rather than an actual restaurant. So it's just telling you that these are the items available. Anything that has the logo here, this is a snack credit. So you can get an idea of what snack credits you might want to use as well. So this website really is so helpful. So before I go into any specifics about certain restaurants, how I actually plan which ones to do on which day, I use my itinerary and I've got a whole video on how I put together a Disney itinerary and I will link that video as a card and I'll link it in the description box below. But you can see on the screen, I'm just showing some footage here from that video. Um, this is the planner that I use. I plan which days I'll be in which parks and which days I'll be doing different things. And from there, I can start to add in restaurants based on the location. So once I know which parks I'll be in or where I'll be at Disney or elsewhere then I can start to decide which restaurants to use so if you want to look at that video take a look at that as well because that kind of plays into this um, planning of dining but that was just um, I won't go into it too much because that's a whole separate video so take a look at that video and then maybe watch this one for more specific details on dining so in terms of choosing the restaurants that you want to eat at, like I was saying, this list is so long, you would be here forever just going straight into going through them. This restaurants at a glance section on the left hand side is really useful because you have some specific categories that might be of interest to you. So all you can eat meals, then they have Animal Kingdom, Disney Springs, character meals, boardwalk area, and then the parks. So this breaks it down a little bit easier. So say for example, you are going with family and you have children and you know that you're going to want to do a character meal. If you click on that one, it will come up with this list. 
It even tells you which kind of characters um, are at each meal, the location, and then you can click on it to look at the specifics. So say, for example, you know your children are going to want to meet Mickey. Um, you can see here Chef Mickey's would be a good option. So you can click on that one and then it will take you back to the menu. So you can see the details of pricing. Uh, they do take dining plan there. So you can see how this little restaurant at a glance is really useful to start getting an idea of places that you might want to go. So if we click on all you can eat meals, if you like that kind of thing, um, there's quite a few options for this. So you can start to look through what might be good. And as I said before, looking at other people's experiences, they do have reviews for these restaurants as well, if you click on them. So there's lots of different ways to get an idea. But my best way, to be honest, is watching other people's vlogs and seeing whether they enjoyed a restaurant and getting recommendations that way. So like I said before, I will link my vlogs below so that you can have a look at those if you are starting from scratch and have no idea about any of these restaurants, because that will give you a good starting point. So once you've chosen the restaurants that you want to book, you can book them 180 days out from your vacation. And some of them you don't need to necessarily book straight away, but there are others that are so difficult to get. If you're not there at that 180 days out, you will struggle to get a reservation. And the kind of places I'm talking about are Be Our Guest, Ohana, Cinderella's Royal Table, um, a lot of the uh, character dining. There are many that are difficult, but those are the main ones that I find I have trouble with on a regular basis. So once you're in My Disney Experience, obviously log in to your account. Um, under things to do, you have dining, and I usually click on all dining. This is just the way I do it, because you can click on make reservations, but I just always do it this way. So once you're in this, it will give you a big list of all of the restaurants, but you can just click in the search. So if we're at 180 days out and we want to book, um, I won't do Ohana because there won't be any reservations for that. So let's say we're looking for Trails End, which is another one of my favourites. So as you start to type, that will come up there. And then you can click on the restaurant. So then it will bring up the page for that particular restaurant and you have this blue box here to check availability. So we're going to click on the calendar and we'll go as far ahead as we can, which in this case is the end of April. So we'll click 30th of April and say we're looking for dinner and don't forget to put your party size in here. I'm just going to do two people and then search times. So then it will come up with available times for the dinner um, service. You can search for a specific time. So let's go for 8.30 p.m. And then it will give you different times. So if you just search for dinner, it sort of gives you more of a broad range. It just kind of guesses when you might want. So usually it's probably best to put in a specific time that you're looking for. If there's an exact match, it will say time match below. Otherwise, it will give you the closest times to the one that you've requested. Um, they do also have the view menu. So if you want to view the menu before you book anything, you can look at that there. So there's lots of information on this page about the restaurant. So if you pick the time, we're just going to go ahead and click that. So then it's just asking who's managing the reservation. It should come up with you if you're logged in as yourself, obviously. So that's just put there. And however many people there are in your party, you can then click on your family and friends list and add the people in to say who is going to be going to that restaurant. So once you've done that, you can leave that blank if you prefer to, because it will still book for two people, even if you don't put who the other person is. So once you've done that, you can click next. Next up, it will take you through to reservation payment method. So this is something that wasn't always the case with um, advanced dining reservations other than signature restaurants, um, but now they've brought it in for everything. So if you're making a reservation, you do have to put a credit card number into the booking. If you do not turn up to that booking and you haven't cancelled within 24 hours, you will be charged $10 per person. That's quite important to remember. If you just forget to go to the reservation or you just don't feel like it, if it is less than 24 hours, that will be a problem and you will get charged. So don't forget about that because that would obviously be really annoying if you've got a large party and you're obviously getting charged to your credit card. So make sure if you don't want a reservation, you do cancel it because that's quite important. 
Otherwise, obviously, when you turn up to the reservation, nothing will be charged to your card. It's just a guarantee, basically. Unfortunately, people before were making a lot of reservations and then just not using them. And then there was no availability for other guests. So they had to bring this in just as a way of managing that problem. So basically, the card that you have stored should be just below down here. Um, if you haven't got one stored, it will ask you to put one in. Um, once you've obviously got the right card there, I always just have the same one on file and use the same one. You can go ahead and click next. Next. And finally, it will take you to review your reservation. So at the top here, you can make sure you've got the correct restaurants, the date and for how many people and time, um, all that information is there. And it also reminds you of the location. And down below here, it will just remind you which card you've put in. It will ask you to put in a mobile number. If you're in the UK and it's not accepting the number, put in your mobile number minus the zero at the beginning. And once you've done that, scroll down to the bottom and you can just click reserve and that will make the reservation. Obviously, I'm not going to do that because we don't actually want to make this reservation. It's just to show you how it works. And down at the bottom of the page, before you click reserve, there is a section here to put special requests. This is where you would want to put in any special dietary requirements. If you have any allergies or anything like that, you can just click add and put that in there. You will need to just scroll down through the guest policies and then click I have read and agree and then you can click reserve. Once you've done that, that will reserve your dining reservation and then you can go back to the beginning of this process to make your next one. So when it comes to making your reservations, what I would recommend you do is make your list of all of the dining reservations you want to make in order of the date. So the earliest ones in the trip to the latest ones. Then I would take a look through that list and pick out any that you know to be very, very difficult to get. So like I say, off the top of my head, Be Our Guest, Ohana, California Grill is very difficult to get, Cinderella's Royal Table, Chef Mickey's, um, most of the character dining I would prioritise. So put the ones at the top that are going to be the most difficult to get. So say for example you're booking Ohana, even if you're booking it later in the trip, I would still book that reservation before anything else, even before the ones earlier in the trip, just because it is so, so difficult to get. So put them into a list of priority and then you can make them in the right order, as soon as you're at your six months out, you know which ones that you want to make first and then you can just work through them one by one. I do also have an article over on my website all about planning and booking ADRs. So if you want to take a look at that and see some of this information written down, it's disneyindetail.com. Um, so you could go and check that out. There's lots of different articles on planning your Disney vacation over there, as well as here on my YouTube channel. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about this, please put them in the comments and I will get back to you if I can answer it. If I can't, I will look it up and then answer it. So feel free to ask anything that you need to for your planning below, because I'm always happy to help with that. And like I said, I've got a playlist with lots of different planning videos, so I will link that below in the description box. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any upcoming videos. Up next is the video I was talking about with how to plan an itinerary, so you can click on that now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!